Hi, ladies and dudes. This is Rebecca Lynn Barkley, a.k.a. Boobop1987. This is my review for a day. Now, today's review, ladies and dudes, well, my friends, it's that time again for another movie review. A movie review that i seen in theaters. And this movie review is, it's going to be Liam Neeson's next underrated film of all time. So here it is, ladies and dudes. My next movie review is A Walk Among the Tombstones. And yes, ladies and dudes, this movie is truly based by a book. A book that I'd never read before. I tried really hard to find one in the library, but sadly they don't have one. But too bad I haven't gone to Barnes and Noble's place yet, if they ever have this book or not. But anyway, yes ladies and dudes, this will be Liam Neeson's next underrated film. And my very first radar feature that featured my favorite main man, who did the Taken Saga overall. So anyway, without further ado, ladies and dudes, here is my movie review number 40, called The Walk Among the Tombstone. The next movie that i seen in theaters. So anyway, here is my main plot of the story, before I can tell you about what the heck do I think about this movie. So the movie starts off with a private detective dude named Matthew Scudder, but actually he's some type of unlicensed private detective dude who's going on some missions for all of his life, you know, doing some detective work and try to solve some cases as soon as he can from some places here and there in New York City. And yes, a long time ago, he was once a private uh, cop. Uh, sadly, he side retired to be up being a cop because there was some tragic mess happened in his past where he got involved of being drunk in the bar and getting involved in some type of accident where a couple of men who wants to rob a bar try to steal money and Matthew tried really hard to kill those guys off as soon as he can but sadly in the end someone died well that will happen around in the middle end of the film but I don't want to take that away if you guys have or haven't seen this movie but anyway Eight years later, he's a private detective, unlicensed private detective, um, you know, doing missions and all that stuff, until one night, um, Matthew met this young man named Kenny. Uh, Kenny told Matthew a very tragic story about what had happened to his wife. He got, uh, she got killed in the process by these two mysterious dudes for some unknown reason, and, um, Kenny asked Matthew for his help to find who those two dudes are and bring them to justice. But Matthew decided, no, no, I'm not going to do this silly case, so here's your money and I'm out of here. But then later on in the story, Matthew decided to do this silly case anyway and try to solve the mystery of who these two dudes are and why the heck did these two men kill Kenny's wife for some unknown reason. And this is where the whole entire mystery will begin for this unknown world called A Walk Among the Tombstones. So anyway, ladies and dudes, that is my whole entire plot of A Walk Among the Tombstones. And I don't want to take too many things away about it, but anyway, I guess you want to know is, ladies and dudes, what the heck do I think about this very underrated film that Liam Neeson was in for another radar film? To tell you the truth is, ladies and dudes, I really do love this movie. It is one of the best movies that I've seen so far, along with Nonstop. I love Nonstop too. That was a pretty darn good movie. If you guys haven't haven't seen my movie review that I did in March. I will say for Walk Among the Tombstones, it had a really good storyline, has likable characters, has great sceneries and highlight moments that happen in New York City, has great semi it had a really good score, 
And sometimes this movie can be a little bit slow here and there. But overall, I really do enjoy this movie. And Sally, it's becoming Liam Neeson's next underrated film, if you know what I mean. So anyway, ladies and dudes, let's head on to the strongest points and the weakest points of A Walk Among the Tombstones. I will say for the strongest points for A Walk Among the Tombstones is the semi-tography. I love the semi-tography. It is so darn well done. For this movie, I do feel like I'm watching a 90s film because it has a fantastic 90s feel to it. I love the details of the movie. It was pretty well shot. I love the buildings. I love the pic really good picture of the movie. And there are so many things I really do love here and there that really happened in this movie. It really did blew me away. The semi is such pure gold. You gotta watch this movie to believe it. It is one of the most beautiful semi I have ever seen in this movie. And it does feel like that I am truly watching a 90s movie. It had a fantastic 90s feel to it. I was so darn blown away for this movie. So yeah, the semi is the strongest point for a walk among the tombstone. But as for the weakest point for a walk among the tombstone, a walk among the tombstones, sometimes the movie can be a little bit slow. It has some slow parts here and there, but I did see a couple of slow parts here and there. Um, well, once the slowness can stop, it can go on back to its fast pace. So yeah, this movie is a, a slow one, but I don't mind the slow part, but I just want this movie to head on to its fast pace. For just a couple of parts here and there. So anyway, the slowness is one of the biggest weak points that I found for A Walk Among the Tombstones. And now we can finally go on to the characters. And let's go on to the three most likable characters I really do enjoy for this movie. The first character I want to mention is this young kid named TJ, played by this Brandon person I really don't know of. Um, is he some type of TV star or rapper? Well, if you guys leave a comment there and let me know about who this young man is. But anyway, I love TJ. He is such a very cool character. He has a great storyline, he has a great personality, great attitude, and he's a really good, excellent partner for Matthew. I really love Matthew and TJ's relationship. It's kind of like a standard father-son figure. Maybe a son that Matthew had never gotten. Uh, well, since he got, he divorced, he got divorced from his ex-wife. But anyway, yeah, TJ is a really cool character. And I feel sorry for this character since uh, he has a cold, he's not feeling too well, and he's homeless, he, he lost his family for some unknown reason. I just feel sorry for this kid, but at least Matthew gave him a whole lot of love and respect, and he, he's really darn caring. I really like the part where Matthew and TJ had a really good relationship, like a standard father-son figure. And the best part I love about TJ is that he doesn't like to eat meat. He hates hamburgers, he hates steak, and all that stuff. So anyway, yeah, TJ, he's an excellent character overall. Next, we got Kenny, played by Dan Stevens. I don't know much about Dan Stevens, but he's some actor who was in a TV show, uh, a British TV show that I never got to watch. But anyway, Dan Stevens did a pretty good job with his character. I love his storyline. I love his personality. I love his attitude. But most of all, he's one of the best serious characters I have ever seen in this movie. And he was so darn serious all this time in the movie where he's very 
very darn concerned about what happened to his wife when his wife got murdered in the process by these two unknown dudes who go out somewhere and murder people for whatever reason it's going to be. But he'll do the best he can to seek out revenge, to find those two dudes and bring them justice, along with Matthew's help, of course. So yeah, I will say for Kenny, he is a really good character overall. And now let's go on to the main character of this movie, Matthew Scudder. Played by the one and only, the old great and mighty Liam Neeson. I will say for Matthew Scudder, he is one of the most best characters in the whole entire movie. I mean, this is Liam Neeson's next bad A word character who is so darn serious all this time in the movie. He is a very headstrong, serious character. I mean, this guy has a great storyline, he has a great personality, great attitude. This is Liam Neeson's next sexiest character who dressed in black, along with that cool looking brown coat that he wear all this time in the movie. Yeah, Liam Neeson was so freaking sexy in that movie. I love the part where he wears black clothes, and that's the old Liam Neeson that I once knew and loved when I first watched the first movie of Taken, where Brian Mills wears that sexy leather jacket. And once again, Liam Neeson is also pretty sexy when he played a really cool Irish private detective dude who's trying to solve mysteries here and there. And also, another best part I love about Matthew is, for the first time in Liam Neeson's life, he's finally using a toothpick in a movie. How cool is that? Liam Neeson finally used a toothpick in a movie and not a stupid, pathetic cigarette. It's a miracle. I'm sure Liam Neeson's happy to finally use a toothpick in a movie. I was wondering... Does Matthew Scudder also use a toothpick in the book? Who knows? If you guys can leave a comment there and let me know if Matthew Scudder ever used a toothpick that came from in the book. But anyway, I'm so darn proud of Liam Neeson finally using a toothpick for a movie. And he used a toothpick in the film for only three times. And three times only. Oh, thank you, oh great mighty Liam Neeson, for for adding a toothpick in the movie. And it's a darn miracle, for goodness sake. Yes! Alright, ladies and dudes. I have nothing else to say about this movie. So, here we go. Here's my final thoughts of Walk Among the Tombstones. Overall, a Walk Among the Tombstones is Liam Neeson's most underrated film. And truly one of the best films that he did so far. It had a good storyline, has good likable characters, it has great semi best 90s feel that I've ever seen in movie history, has a good score, and I'll never forget when Liam Neeson played another good character in another good underrated film. And so for my rating for 1 to 10, I decided to give A Walk Among the Tombstones a really good score of 8.9 out of 10. Please watch this movie to believe it. If you haven't, Matthew Scudder will hunt you down and take you down for the count. For real, if you know what I mean. So anyway, that is my whole entire movie review of A Walk Among the Tombstones. I hope you enjoyed this movie review, and join me tomorrow for my next movie review. As I got a request from Disney 65 fan, and she wants me to do this next movie review called Tangled. Uh, a good CGI Disney film, if you know what I mean. So anyway, be prepared for this movie review to come. I will see you all tomorrow. Sayonara.